Hi, I'm Pat Kiernan. Glad you could be with us for today's edition of Pat's Papers. We go through the nation's newspapers to bring you the highlights. Here's our top story today. There is a choice in the papers this morning between economic stimulus and just plain stimulus. The New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and just about every other paper on down the line put the economy on the front page. The New York Post decided to put a twist on that, offering Sports Illustrated's brand of stimulus. The swimsuit issue is on sale now. Israeli cover girl Barra Faley is pictured. We have talked a lot about the downturn in the newspaper and magazine business, but the swimsuit issue is still a blockbuster for Sports Illustrated. The Post says 10% of the magazine's annual revenue comes from the bikini special. Back to the economy now. The changes the Obama administration is making to the financial industry bailout. As you probably know by now, the stock market sold off after the Treasury Secretary announced these new plans. The New York Times says this plan envisions a far greater government role in the markets and banks than at any time since the 1930s. The Times editorial board says Timothy Geithner was short on details yesterday. The lead editorial says someone should have told Geithner the one thing to avoid at a time of uncertainty is raising more questions. The front page of the Chicago Tribune boldly portrays the magnitude of this financial crisis, a $2 trillion financial stability plan, as the Senate was passing $838 billion economic stimulus bill. The Senate and House hope to deliver their final version of the stimulus package by the end of the week. Walmart has been one of the retail businesses on comparatively good footing in an economic downturn. People who may be pulling back from more expensive purchases elsewhere are turning to Walmart for value, but the home office in Bentonville, Arkansas, is not immune to cutbacks. The Arkansas Morning News says yesterday's job cut announcement reinforces concerns that the area's economy is too dependent on Walmart and a handful of other major employers. The Washington Post reporting a cloud of uncertainty over Israel this morning. Two candidates were declaring electoral victory yesterday. The story says four major parties and a plethora of minor parties divided 120 seats. The big winners were former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the Likud party with 27 seats and Foreign Minister Sipi Livni's Kadima who tallied 28 seats. Ultimate success, though, lies in what coalitions can be formed. Since 1991, there have been military restrictions on access of press photographers to take pictures of flag-draped coffins of U.S. soldiers. Now, Defense Secretary Robert Gates is working to lift that photo ban. The Seattle Times with coverage this morning, which includes an interview with a local woman who ignited a censorship controversy in 2004. Tammy Cecilia was working as a military contractor. She saw the coffins of soldiers killed in Iraq. She took a photo, and that photo was published, sparking a national debate. Symbolic news from Australia today. Story picked up all around the country, seen here in the San Francisco Chronicle. Firefighters found a koala bear roaming amongst the charcoal and tree stumps in Australia after the big fires. Over 200 people are dead. The koala is seen as an icon for a desperate climate. The firefighter that found the koala says it was amazing. He turned around, sat on his bum, and sort of looked at me with a look like, put me out of my misery. The Washington Times carries a sad story today. But the star of the Kite Runner movie, Afghani Zakaria Ibrahimi, the 13-year-old Pakistani child actor, is in hiding after receiving death threats for his participation in the racially charged rape scene in the movie. Ibrahimi's parents are pointing a finger at Paramount for not doing enough to help their family. The attention in the Octomom story has shifted today to her fertility doctor. Coverage of the New York Post says the father of the California woman who had the eight kids says he talked to the fertility doctor after the first six and got a promise that it was done. Edward Sulman says, I begged him not to do this. The Long Beach Press-Telegram is covering the story this morning that's on the front page, noting that medical oversight groups are now looking into the reports that the doctor helped her with all 14 of her children. The U.S. Postal Service throwing in its two cents. The Montgomery Advertiser among the papers with the story this morning. On the front page is a graph that shows stamp prices over the years. A first-class letter will cost 44 cents starting in May. Well, the Detroit economy has been ice cold. Temperatures there are warmer than ever. Yesterday, Detroit citizens felt the hottest February 10th in history, 58 degrees. That warm spell is expected to end there and elsewhere tomorrow. In fashion, the more things change, the more they stay the same, according to the L.A. Times. Adam Shorn writing about the men's fashion shows. And the fact that the items shown on the runway are things that very few men ever actually wear. The shows are an exercise in branding. In stores, the reality is that the staples of the American male wardrobe change very little from one year to the next. And the state of the economy has increased the awkwardness of group dining. According to the front page of the New York Times dining section, 
An article points out diners now look at the group check arriving at a power lunch as kryptonite rather than a chance to flash your cash. And that's our look at what's in the headlines today. We do this every day at patspapers.com. You will find this video report and you'll find links to all of the stories mentioned in today's report so you can read the stories for yourself.